All right, so welcome to the Magic of Mala's workshop. And tonight I have Chris Vondermaden, who is a special guest with me here. And he is the director of the Crystal Healing Institute at Mind Piranha Academy. And I'm very thankful that he's here with us. So Chris, thank you for being here with us tonight. Absolutely. So we are going to share a couple of things with you guys. The first thing we're going to share is there's a stone for that. And the second thing, we're going to talk about um, our favorite stones for self-love, abundance, and then stress and anxiety. And then at the end, Chris is going to share with us how to develop our own skill for crystal healing. So we're going to go ahead and cover all of that. And I just want to let you guys know if any questions come up while we're talking and sharing our information, either write them down so that you don't forget to ask us at the end or um, go ahead and put them in the chat right away. And just know that we're going to cover the information that I just talked about. And then at the end, we'll come back and answer anybody's questions. So don't think that we're ignoring you or not answering your question. We're just going to make sure that we cover all the information that we want to get covered without getting distracted. And then we'll come back to your questions. Okay. So with all of that, we're going to go ahead and get started with there's a stone for that. So what does that mean? Well, pretty much there is a stone that can cover anything that might come up for you. And so in one of the past um, workshops that I did, I touched on this a little bit. And so tonight I just wanted to go into it a little bit deeper. And then I also wanted to have Chris share his perspective on it as well. And so um, as I shared with all of you in the past, I have this book. It's a very large book that I use um, anytime anyone comes to me and has me custom design a mala for them. And the biggest thing that I do is, you know, I have a couple of questions that I ask people to share answers with me. And the main reason that I do that is so that I really can have a snapshot of what's happening for people, whether they want a mala for health reasons, whether they want a mala for emotional reasons, whether they want a mala for spiritual reasons, or or perhaps they really are drawn to a mala and they really want a mala and they might not know why or what's happening for them, but the information that they share with me kind of gives me that idea of what's happening and what stones can really be best suited for them. And so I really use this book in the, in the back of the book, it actually breaks down how the stones are set up. So it really breaks down in um, a physical element. So it, it lists pretty much any physical ailment that you could be experiencing, back pain, neck pain, um, you know, any types of diseases that you could be diagnosed with, um, um, ankle, joint pain, arthritis, really anything, any physical issue that you could be experiencing. And then it gives a list of the best stones that are, that could help you in healing your physical ailment. And then there's another section of the book that really breaks down all of our, all of our emotional feelings. Um, it breaks it down into many components and it breaks it down into, you know, worthiness issues, abandonment issues, you know, different things that we can struggle with on an emotional or a spiritual level. And then it gives the best stones correlated with those issues as well. And so for me, that information is really, really important that I have, especially for people who are wanting me to custom design a mala for them because I'm really able to get into this book and really use it as a tool and really help understand what the best stones for your body and for your soul are going to be at this moment in your journey. So that's 
you know, that's kind of where I come from when I say there's a stone for that because there really is pretty much a stone for anything that you have going on. So Chris, do you want to share a little bit about your take on there's a stone for that? Sure. Um, and I, again, it always goes back to that Nikola Tesla quote that if you want to understand the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And ultimately, our experience of reality is generated from a, what you could call a beingness. The way your being affects your thoughts, it affects your feelings, it affects your actions. And so if you uh, feel joyful, if, if that's kind of the, the, the place of being that you're at, it is one of joy, the thoughts you think are going to resonate with that. The actions you do, the things you're up to in life, the things you're drawn to, the things you're not drawn to, um, I mean, even, even how your body responds is going to be directly affected by that vibration of joy. And um, there's all kinds of vibrations out there that create all kinds of experiences of life. And if there is some experience that you're looking for, whether that's a physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, whatever experience, there is a vibration that can generate that experience. Um, and so it's like finding that right note or that, that um, creates all of that for you. So even something as obscure as, I don't know, I'm looking at the stones here, lucid dreaming, you know, that has a frequency to it. And when you find that frequency, then suddenly that becomes possible. Um, a lot of things that you may want to develop, you may not know the frequency for. So for example, um, something like, I don't know, like visionary stuff, some of that third eye stuff, you may not intuitively already know what does that feel like. And so when you get a stone like, um, what have I got by me, some iolite, um, that's got a certain feel to it that as you learn how to be that energy opens up that whole sort of world for you. And that, and that goes for health issues to <laughs> crazy spiritual issues. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. my take on it. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really using, and I know you're going to get into this more a little bit later, but it's really using the, the stones as an aid to help you really get to that experience as you said or that feeling place that frequency that you really want to be at mm -hmm. yeah. and i always tell people because a lot of times people are like well how do i know like how do i know which stones that you know and it's like well just you know you and i can decide that together and i can completely decide it for you and if there is a particular mala that you see that you're really drawn to and you're like i don't really know why this one but it's really i'm really feeling drawn to it and this is the one that i want and it and chris i don't know if you feel this way but for me it's like well you're being drawn to that for a reason you know you might not know in your mind, your thought process might not be able to help you get there, why you're being drawn to that, but your body, your spirit, your soul, like there is a reason you're being drawn to that. So you can't really, you can't really go wrong if you're, if you're feeling, I've had people reach out to me and they're like, I really want you to design a mala for me. And I'm really, I, I'm really feeling drawn to this particular one. Like, is that okay if I get that? And I'm like, well, of course it's for you, you know? And if that's what you're feeling called to have, then I would say, yeah, then that's the exact one that you need. There's that quote, I don't remember where I, I saw it, but it's, um, the soul knows how to heal itself. Yeah. And our, our souls, our energetic counterpart has so much more access to wisdom and knowledge and intuition that our kind of mental, normal consciousness doesn't have. Um, so yeah, like very specific stones will just jump out at you. There can even be, you know, 20 of a certain kind and out of that 20, it's like the, there's the, that one that just like is the one for you. It's got the, the, just the very tweaked, very specific frequency that's going to do what, you, what you're wanting in that moment. So yeah, 
it's really neat. Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah. Yeah, when I first started really getting into stones and like the raw stones and the gems, I I would go to these fairs uh, with a friend of mine and I'm like, I don't really know what's happening. Like, I didn't know what was happening, but I'm like, I'm really drawn to this. Like, I really like, I'm going to buy this and I really have no idea why. Right. And the more I've really gotten into this, I have gone back and researched those specific stones. And then I'm like, oh, well, that makes complete sense. (laughs) Right. So yeah, it's like in that moment, you might not know why you're being drawn to that. And just like Chris said, your soul knows what it wants. And so, yeah, there's a reason. So whatever, whatever that gut instinct is, whatever your intuition is telling you, I say, go with it. So now we're going to get into, Chris and I are both going to share, um, our favorite stones for when it comes to self-love, abundance, and stress or anxiety. So I will just start with self-love. And so immediately when someone is sharing information with me and I'm really feeling that self-love is just this person just needs to really embrace accepting themselves and really loving themselves like they've never loved themselves before, immediately the first thing that comes to mind is rose quartz. And just the look of rose quartz. I don't know if you all have ever, oh, I have, I have a mala, but it's sitting away from me. So just the look of rose quartz, it's this amazing, really pale pink color. And it's really the sweetest, sweetest stone. And to hold it and to like just be in it, it's just this very peaceful, very calming stone. And so anytime someone comes to me and I'm like, they need, you know, they really need to be embraced in self-love. They need to be wrapped in self-love. I immediately go to Rose Quartz. And one of the a big component of it is also calming the mind. And I think when we are experiencing that deep level of self-love, when we're giving ourselves that gift of self-love, that is really when we can experience a calm mind. So that's my go-to stone when I think of self-love. Chris, what's yours? Um. It depends on the day you ask me, but lately, um, the one I've been really working with is, I don't know if you guys can see that, rhodochrosite. Um, Very similar vibration to rose quartz. Um, But yeah, it it just goes in and and you feel good. You just feel good being you. Um, And of course, the heart starts to open and... I don't know, life just seems better. <laughs> like things just seem easier. Um, again, the, the stress leaves, the, the fear, the, the whatever's been going on just kind of all falls away mm-hmm. and <laughs> you fall in love with life again. So there's rhodochrosite. The um, other one that I, that I really like for self-love would be this pink pedalite. This mm-hmm. is... Um, it's very, very heart centered, but it's also got the higher chakras. And so it's like this, almost like this divine self-love. It's um, kind of takes you out of your normal experience of life and, and connects you to that, that, that higher self perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, so you really become like this being of love on the earth. So this is like really about being in your message, being in your calling, um, that kind of vibration. So those, are, those are probably my two two favorites right now. Yeah. I love rhodochrosite. Oh my goodness. I am actually making a mala with that right now. <laughs> and you might be able to guess who that's for. <laughs> um, yes, that's awesome. So the next stone is the stone for abundance. So for me, as soon as, you know, when I'm in conversation with people and someone's sharing with me, you know, 
a financial situation or even a health situation um, and just really feeling depleted and feeling feeling in a space where they're lacking really being sharing with me that they're in this you know lack mindset you know they don't have what they want what regardless of whether it's health money um, relationships just anything in their life that they're lacking and they they don't have and they want to create it or create more of it immediately I think of green jade and green jade <clears throat> really for me, for me, like the the feeling for green jade that I get is is really twofold. It's it's abundance, and it's a healer of the heart. Like it's the col it's green. It's the color of the heart chakra, and so it also is a stone that I go to for someone who really has experienced some really deep deep trauma and needs some very deep heart healing to take place. And for me, correlating green jade to abundance, I really take that to the space of, for someone to really experience, fully experience abundance, abundance at every level of just feeling that their life is abundant. They're there's nothing more that they could have. They don't need or want for anything. They're just living this amazing, complete life. I think that in order for any one of us to get to that place where we're feeling that and experiencing that, it's so important to really heal our heart. And I don't think there's anyone on the planet who can't use a little heart healing. And of course, there are some that really need to experience heart healing more than others. And so anytime that I get into a space where we're a conversation where someone is expressing just, you know, some really deep trauma or really deep hurts, and they're simultaneously expressing wanting to create abundance in their life, immediately I go to green jade because once we've really poured into our own hearts and we've healed our own hearts, then we can be completely open to living that abundant life that we've been wanting to live. So that's my, my thought process around green jade. Chris, what is your kind of go-to stone for abundance? I, I would probably say um, this here, if you guys can see that, mm -hmm. that is peridot. Mm. And I don't know, just, just holding this stone, it, it's like you, you suddenly just one, it's, it's very positive. It's very uplifting. It's, you, you've got that, just this positive outlook on stuff. Um, but it's also very lucky. It's like you become attractive to synchronicity, to flow, to um, the, the kind of thoughts that you want that lead to abundance. And um, I don't know, it's just got this vibration that's so beneficial. It just shifts your perspective into... That, that abundant mindset um, mm -hmm. and like weird things, for me, weird things happen, just, just very synchronistic things start to increase whenever I've got this in my pocket. I remember uh, a couple weeks ago, just, um, I, don't, I don't carry it with me all the time, but it was, I, I had put it in my pocket and was just like reflecting on like, gosh, this has been an amazing day. Like what's going on? Like everything's just perfect. It was like, oh, I've got, <laughs> I've got the peridot on me. So, um, that's probably my go-to abundance stone. And again, it's that green color. Mm -hmm. So that heart chakra opens that up yeah. um, and just connects you. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. So the next thing is stress and anxiety. So for me, I think of Amazonite for stress and anxiety. And there's a couple of reasons why I, th I think of Amazonite. Number one, it's my mala. It's the one that I wear all the time. So 
<laughs> and it's ironic because it's like I used to have so much stress and anxiety in my life, I feel like all the time, especially with what I used to do. And so, yeah, to have to, to have something that I can wear regularly that really is helpful to reduce those feelings because I think my body just got so used to feeling that stress and anxiety feeling that like adrenaline rush, right? And so having something that I can wear that just really allows me to to be reminded, but also to just feel that frequency and that vibration of being calm and keeping myself calm is very helpful. And so for me, when I think of Amazonite, um, it's known to be the stone of harmony and it's the stone of to to assist with telling one's truth and it's also known as the peacemaker and so if you're able to really step into a place where you can speak your truth and tell your truth and live in this peaceful place this peaceful state of being then you can experience a calm life, right? You can experience the opposite of the feelings of stress and anxiety. So for me, Amazonite is really, it's the stone of harmony. It's the stone of freedom. It's the stone of being reminded that you can have a peaceful life. You can create that for yourself. So Chris, what is your go-to stone for stress and anxiety? Um, pro probably if it's like specifically that lilac lipidolite. Mm. Um, and lipidolites, uh, they have a lithium content. <laughs> There's that lithium element. Mm -hmm. um, but th this one in particular, it's just there. there's a vibration to surrender there's a, a, a vibration to letting go to just releasing um and that's very much what ha, how i would describe this it. it's just like you know let it all go just like um it invites you to just kind of melt away and the more you work with it you can actually start to just feel old things stuck energy uh mm -hmm. debris that you may have picked up from places just start to go mm -hmm. and the longer you work with it, the longer you just allow that, that that clearing process to happen. Eventually, you get to this clear space. It's like mm -hmm. the, the stress just kind of leaves. Um, and it's also got this third eye element. So mm -hmm. after a while, it's like you get this really just clear vision. When we're stressed and anxious, um, we're not thinking clearly. We're worried about stuff. But um, this just kind of clears all of that away. It's almost like this little veil drops and you, you, you just see more clearly. Um, you're, you're feeling more clearly, you see more clearly. Um, so that whole world of stress tends to disappear. Yeah. I love that. That was a beautiful stone as well. Um, well, so thank you, Chris, for sharing your favorite stones. Um, so now what I want to get into is um, Chris is going to share a little bit with us about how to develop our own skills for crystal healing, for our own crystal healing. So Chris, I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Um, so the, the, the most important thing really is getting to the place where you can really feel the energy specifically where you're it's really distinct um and so the way i like to start with that is uh through what you could call a gratitude or appreciation uh so if you have a stone and a good one to start this process with is smoky quartz just mm -hmm. because it kind of already has that vibration to it and so it when you do this exercise it amplifies it um but if you hold your stone or your smoky quartz and you just feel appreciation for it, you just kind of extend uh, a very strong flow of appreciation, what appreciation does is it removes our resistance to a thing. So if there's something out in the world that I don't like, that I'm resisting, um, 
it creates a block. It creates this energetic separation. But if that, if that thing out there, I start to appreciate, you'll actually feel all this resistance fall away. And eventually you just open up to the thing and you have this new connection. So if I, if you're doing this to a person, like whenever we're thankful to someone, we're like, oh my gosh, thank you. And we start feeling this gratitude and appreciation. We feel this connection to the person. Mm -hmm. And so when you do that with a stone, when you just kind of open the heart and send this appreciation of the stone, it clears any kinds of doubts you may have or energetic blocks to that particular stone's frequency or you know anything that's in the way between you and that stone or you and that energy uh, gets cleared. And then um, in that space, you can really start to almost feel or hear or see, um, that's gonna occur to, to different people in different ways, but the, the note, the energy of that stone, and so as you kind of are able to focus in on that and distinguish that, um, that's the first level. If you want to go to the next level, you once you've locked in on that frequency, then you can start generating that same frequency on your own. So you start sending that back to the stone. Just like all of the emotions we feel, we're generating. It's like we can generate happiness, we can generate sadness, you can generate the frequency of whatever crystal you're working with. And so when you do that, you enter into this sort of resonant harmony with the stone. And if you've ever seen that YouTube video where the wind's blowing on this bridge just right and the bridge starts resonating and eventually this you know, whole bridge collapses, that's the power of resonance. As you um, do that exchange with the stone, the energy just builds and builds and builds and you can have Kind of amazing experiences that way. Um, so that's clearing stuff out. That's getting you very familiar with a stone's particular frequency. Um, when you want to go beyond that, um, after that resonant energy has built up, what you'll find is that ultimately it's going to want to come out of you. So you've just built up all this energy, um, but you know, for me, what are stones or what are crystals? They are, um, you could call them messengers. They, they have a vibration, a way of being that they're teaching us. And when we really get that message, we, we, the kind of the culmination of that is when we start sharing that same message with the world, when we actually become the crystal, as it were, or we, we embody its message. And so after you've resonated with the stone, you can begin to just kind of shine or project or radiate that same energy into the world around you. And so that's where you really start doing the healing work. Um, any stone, as long as you know that frequency or found that frequency, you can share that with other people. The stone doesn't have to be there. Um, that's kind of the, the journey into becoming a, a healer with using specific energies. Um, so. Awesome. Very cool. I love that. I love that there are these avenues and these outlets for us to really um, work with, right? We can actually get our hands on it and we can actually work with them and really get into them to do what we can to heal our own selves. Like I, yeah. I love all of that. I love stones and crystals for that. I love oils for that. Like there's so many things that I like. I just love all of that because it really is an opportunity to really look into our own selves and see where and how we can really take charge of really healing our own self, healing, putting that healing back into ourselves. We don't have to look outside of ourselves for that healing, right? We can put it back into ourselves. So thank you for sharing all of that. Um, so a couple of things. The first thing, Chris and I have some giveaways for um, everybody that joined us live tonight. So I'm giving away an Amazonite mala, and Chris is giving away two spots for one of his courses. Um, so... I have, um, while Chris was sharing, I was putting some stuff together. And so the winner of the Amazonite Mala is Maureen Jarrett. 
<laughs> um, and then the winner for the two winners for Chris's course is um, Peggy Sprague and Carmen Shields. So um, myself and Chris will be in touch with the three of you that won. And for the others that are on here, I will think of something for the two of you so you don't feel like you didn't walk away with anything. <laughs> and I'll be in touch with you. Um, and then I also just wanted to let you guys know that the next workshop is going to be on September 13th. Um, which is a Wednesday. It's two weeks from now, and it will also be at 6.30 Pacific Standard Time. And the things that I'm going to cover in that workshop is why do I want a mala? Why do you want a mala? So I'm really going to talk about why you might be wanting that. And then I'm going to talk about I've shared this in a previous workshop. I talked about setting an intention. I gave some ideas, but I really want to get into really how to set the intention with your mala. You know, you, you've decided to get a mala for, you know, whatever your reason is of why you wanted a mala, and then you've ordered it and you've received it and now you've gotten it. And so how do you go about setting your intention once you've received your mala? And then the last thing I want to talk about is, is affirmations in malas. So also in a previous workshop, I talked about, you know, a lot of times people will use mantras and they will have mantras during, you know, while they're using their malas. And so I really want to hone in on an affirmation and having your own personal affirmation for yourself and having you know, have whatever it is, whether it's a word or, you know, a couple of words strung together, whatever that is, whatever could be most beneficial for you in your life. And so, so using that affirmation in conjunction with your mala to really boost your energy, boost your frequency even more. So that's what I'm going to be covering in two weeks on Wednesday, September 13th. So I will make sure that you all um, get the link so that you can get registered so you can come back and join us. And I'm going to go over to the chat, but does anybody have um, any questions before we end the call? What is the course that Chris is offering? Chris, do you want to talk about the... Yeah, it's, it's the um, Shamanic Stonework with Smoky Quartz. And if you've already taken that, um, <laughs> you know, and I'll, I'll, let's do what else I've got over at Mind Prana. Awesome. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Going once, going twice. <laughs> All right. Well, if there are no more questions, then we will sign off for this evening. And I just want to say thank you so much to Chris for joining me and sharing all of your knowledge with everybody. And thank you to everybody who made it on here live with all of us. This was a great, fun evening, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Chris. Bye. Bye.